Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the test account and that is right, the patch has finally arrived. Now today is on the test server. Today is the patch notes on the test server, which means if we follow the traditional kind of um, schedule, Monday will be the patch notes on the global server and then Tuesday it will be up on the global server. So we still do have about another week before these patch notes will be up on global. This of course brings the it's awakened version of Entendre. Now overall, it seems like a lot of players are not too impressed with the design. Um, and really the, the visually looking at the hero as an awakened hero, a lot of players are a lot of love the skin that they did for Entendre, but not so much the awakened version because it is kind of basic where they could have really went, you know, big dragon flame spear um, kind of build, but unfortunately that's what, what they went with. So the new hero, of course, is going to be up. The Bountiful Trials is going to be up. And the new Voyage of Wonder, which is the Land of Exiles featuring Entendre. Now, this, of course, is going to be the Voyage of Wonder that is tied to her getting the Awakened version. We'll probably have some videos around it. We'll have a lot kind of built around it. So the Gift of Time event. Now, this, of course, for new players, every time that we get an Awakened hero release, we get 50 Time Emblems out of here. And we also get discounted draws out of the Temple of Time. So this is very imperative when it comes to building out these heroes because of course it's going to save you a lot of time emblems which again we'll talk about in just a minute but the gift of time is going to give you those 50 emblems and then of course you will receive a 20 percent discount on the first six 10 draw summons so they're giving you 50 of them you get them discounted so you can pull them all with just what you have right there and finally guys it happened improved hero drop rates in the stargazer and temple of time and optimize the following pools this is what we've been waiting for. This is what we've actually saved since we've seen the dev notes. And I believe it was three patches ago that we got the dev notes um, that we're talking about the adjustments in both the Stargazer and the Temple of Time. Increase the drop rating from two to 2.5, added tier one in tier two mythic gear and common in elite bizarre totems and remove the artifacts and the arena tokens. Now, the big thing with this is not only the rate adjustment to the Stargazer, but the common and elite totems. Now, of course, you can get common and elite totems. You can take those totems, you can recycle them into the mythic or the legendary totems within the collections, which means you don't need all of those arcane staffs to go ahead and summon, even though they are very, very nice to have. And I feel like we do need them on a regular basis to do summons. This is gonna give you at least some ability to get some of the totems in there. So when you're doing your run, you can actually use those totems. Then, of course, the Temple of Time as we get ready to summon for the Awakened version of Entendre. Added Tier 3 Mythic Gear and Legendary Bizarre Totems. That's right, you are going to get the Legendary Totems out of here, which is going to be exceptional when it comes to being able to, again, build some of those collections, giving you the ability. Now, for me, this is kind of just a stepping stone in the right direction to building out those collections. It's been way, way, way overdue. And I feel like the increase or the addition of Arcane Staffs and a couple other places need to need to really be um, increased as well because even with the totems, there is a very, very big RNG factor to getting them and getting really good quality, high level um, collections out of there are very difficult to do. Now, of course, formation saving options when adventurers save their formation in games. Uh, Arena of Heroes, Legend Champion tr Tournament, and the Championship. Those formations and any equipped collections won't be affected by changes made outside of the modes. Now, this is important to note because when you're going through and you're doing different, um, different modes, it is moving all of your collections. A lot of players will hop into a mode and they won't have the optimal collections in there. And this has been an ongoing kind of pain in the butt um, thing that we've been dealing with is the moving of collections not being able to equip the same collection on multiple heroes, kind of like what we've seen with the artifacts, but also when you're changing game modes, like I said, you're not having the ability to lock in those collections. When adventures save formations in modes like Treasure Scramble, Treasure Vanguard, Treasure Hunt, these formations and any equipped collection artifacts will be based on the most recent saves. So these three game modes right here, you're not gonna have the collections in there. And again, this can make a really big difference between, you know, performing a lot better with the correct collections or falling back a significant amount because there's not collections on your heroes. You have to make sure that you have this. Now, the Fight of Fates is coming back. If you played this before, it's kind of like a card game. Um, it, it's okay. It, it, it 
For me, I go in there, I get the loot. That's really all it is. They could do a lot more with it as they continue to kind of recycle this. I, I wish they would do a little bit more of this. Um, the boss formation Nightmare Corridor is more as Diablos to replace the Devourer. So we are going to have another boss in the Nightmare Corridor. Um, unfortunately, they did forget about the guild bosses. Those have been there for five years. And unfortunately, they haven't had really much of an update or updated loot at this point. So unfortunately, we're not seeing anything with guild bosses yet. Removed Elite Clash mode from the Treasure Scramble and restored daily uh, exploration to 100 battles. All right, so they are changing that up quite a bit. Optimize the calculation logic for the Merit Shop in the Dragonforge Trials. After the reset, rewards from the previous week cannot be claimed during the three-day reward calculation period. They will be available once the calculation period ended. So you're not going to get them immediately. It's going to wait those three days. Not too happy about that because, of course, this, again, the Dragonforge needs a little bit of a revamp, maybe just a little bit of a tweaking. Um, enrollment season for the Mystic Star Zone will close on... The local so again this is remember one round combat three days of, of the enrollment one day of matching three days of battle this again just go in and farm your nodes making sure that you're getting all of your resources out of there and then fixed an issue with enoki not sure a lot of players know but enoki is actually a mauler hero that nobody uses so there are some fixes in there with war fury which of course they could make some adjustments and i know Looking in here, we're going to have to see what the Awakened version of Entendre looks like and how effective that she is going to be. But even here, guys, when you start looking at the, the bigger picture of the heroes, when you look at the Stargazer, when you look at the Temple of Time, um, we have to measure really the impact that we're going to see with the Awakened version of Entendre. But also, when you start looking at some of the Awakened version of Shamira, when you look at the Awakened version of Athelia, even the Awakened version of Baden, a lot of those heroes are still used in an incredible amount of places. So if you're currently building a hero, finish out the hero. This is a question I get all the time when it comes to the Awakened Heroes. If you're currently working on a higher tier Awakened Hero, I would not by any means stop building them. Have a half-built Awakened Hero to, to essentially start building Entendre or another hero. Finish the Awakened Heroes that, that you have. And of course, when you're finishing the Awakened Heroes, there are really a couple things to remember. Number one, you have to get the signature item to plus 30, the furniture to the nine of nine. And then of course, the E60 engraving on the Awakened Heroes. And I don't think there are any Awakened Heroes that do not require the full, um, the, the 30960 build because of the design, because of how they are, that unlocks all of the skills and abilities. If you're missing any portion of those, essentially you're gonna have a hero that is missing a lot of skills and abilities and the effectiveness of them goes down dramatically. Now, of course, looking at the Awakened version of Entendre, we finally got the Fiery Devotion. Now, we've been doing the, the stained glass window in here, and again, a little bit of kind of basic on the build, and that's what a lot of players have been kind of talking about. You can see it goes through the story. The overview will be available tomorrow, which is funny because they will release the hero. The patch will be up tomorrow. We'll be able to see the skills and abilities, including the Awakened skill, even though they're still gonna be locked in here. We have full access to the hero tomorrow, which means that we're going to have the ability to actually go in there and check out everything before it's released in the storyboard, which I guess I don't understand a little bit because I think they should kind of go in conjunction releasing the hero when they do the skills, but it's the way that Lilith does it. But all right, guys, so that is going to do it for our patch notes. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.